Yeah. <laughs> well, let's start with um, the E at the end of your last name. Do you pronounce it or not? <laughs> I, I don't. <laughs> although a lot of people feel like, although it's funny because my, my, my high school nickname became Grapey. Um, and uh, I had a, well, because I actually had a, I had a French teacher for some reason who would like to pronounce it. <laughs> Everybody thought that was so funny. I was like, that's not how it's said. <laughs> so some people call me great. Uh, but it's great. Um, yeah, it, uh, actually, so this is the, the history part, right? Where I kind of go over my... Absolutely, what my whatever you want. I, I might throw a couple unscripted at you, but... Um, no, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, tell, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you get, got to be a swimmer. <laughs> sure. um, so I was uh, just your average ordinary suburban kid uh <laughs> more or less but uh i got into swimming at age seven um really sort of never picked up on any kind of interest in soccer or anything that involved like hand-eye coordination probably because i was so bad at it um you know as the kid who was picked last in gym class and you know just the, the classic like you're no good at anything um physical uh but then i found swimming through the ymca and started swimming and loved it and had a great time with it. And uh, so, yeah, from age seven to all the way through high school, I swam. I um, was an age group swimmer. Um, I was mentioning yesterday in New England, swimming actually is not very big. Um, it's, it doesn't have the, the sort of cachet that it does in the Midwest or the West. You know, people talked about their varsity high school swimming teams. And, oh, yeah, so little of that um, in New England. I mean, yes, there's high schools and pools, but I mean, I was in Rhode Island, so make that even smaller. Um, I mean, by the end of my age group career, Rhode Island literally had one age group swim team for the whole state. <laughs> so it gives you a sense of how, how tiny and unpopular the sport really was. Um, and to some degree still is. It's just, it's not culturally a big thing here. Um, so uh, we also don't have many outdoor pools because it's not very friendly for half the year. So, right. uh, so anyway, um, and then I, I did, uh, in looking for colleges, I, I went to Carnegie Mellon in, in Pittsburgh, uh, which is a Division three school. It was very important for me to swim, so actually that was a big factor in choosing that school because they did have a team. Um, but then I did quit uh, my junior year because I just, I wanted to feel what it was like to be in college, not wet all the time. <laughs> uh, you know, it was just, I, I just sort of had it. It's been a lifetime of doing this. Um, and that was a very fun year, uh, full of, um, you know, I overloaded my classes and I did all sorts of other things and partied a lot and then realized how much I missed everybody on the team. And I thought like, oh, I'll maintain these friendships, but it's not the same when you're not doing it with them. You're not kind of going through that cathartic thing together. So I went back senior year and swam my last year of college, which was wonderful. Um, and I didn't even swim very well and I didn't care. I was, I was with everybody again and it was a good time. Um, so, so, uh, so yeah, and then the, the rest of um, sort of my trajectory was I, um, I it, open water swimming was really not a big thing in my world, although I had actually done a, an open water swim in Rhode Island that is a fundraiser for a group called Save the Bay, which has done a great job of cleaning up Narragansett Bay over the years, bringing awareness to it. So um, it's a 1.7 mile swim from Newport to an island in the middle called Jamestown. And uh, I started, I did that first at the age 15. And then had done it a number of years. And over the time, it just kind of got successfully more expensive, like a lot of these fundraisers went. So now you have to, like today, you have to raise almost $500 to, just to go into the event, which um, again is great because it's awesome money for them. But that's a lot of money in a lot of people's worlds to try to come up with as you're also trying to come up with race fees for other things. So, And it's only 1.7 miles. So <laughs> it used to seem like, oh my God so much distance uh, and it is for a lot of people but it's uh, it's not for us anymore so much um, but anyway so it, but I, after 20 I just sort of uh, fell off the, the swimming wagon um, and didn't really do I wasn't doing much at all um, I did a few triathlons I got did a couple marathons running um, and then kind of picked up some bad habits of working too much started a career started a few businesses um, started a nasty smoking habit um, which took me up until the age of 40 um, when I injured my ankle um, in a ridiculous, just stepped off a curb wrong in New York in the wrong pair of shoes <laughs> and uh, connected with um, my husband's uh, acupuncturist here in town who happens to also be a channel swimmer. Oh, wow. Maura Twomey, and she's amazing and awesome. Um, she's in her 60s. 
Uh, she had not yet swum the EC, but she had a date when I met her. And um, she very forcefully <laughs> bullied me back into swimming. <laughs> That's not fair. She actually did, very kindly did. Um, but every time I would see her, she'd be like, um, you know, you told me you were a swimmer. I could tell by looking at you that you were a swimmer. You really should get back into shape. It would help you out a lot. Did you swim? No, I didn't. I've been too busy. Next appointment, same speech. And finally, I was like, all right, just to shut you up, I'm going to get back into the pool. <laughs> and it was amazing. Um, even though it was terrible, you know, it was like, I've been in the pool in like five years or whatever. Yes. Oh my God. Right. I miss this so much. Um, and then of course I've met all of you guys <laughs> over the course of the next several years. Um, I quit smoking like three or four months after starting to get back in. Um, it was, it's not a very compatible habit with this sport. <laughs> Although I know several people actually, even who are on this, on the circuit who are quiet smokers, um, which is amazing. But, um, so were all the distance swimmers at my college. So it's a, it's a strange thing to balance with such a highly aerobic activity, but I thought it was done. Uh, Leave it. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, I started, um, entered a race in St. John called the beach to beach power swim, which is a three mile swim. And remember like going to it, um, I was on vacation and singing like, this is stupid. I, I like, I could drown. <laughs> and, uh, I came in third out of like a field of like a hundred swimmers. It's like, Oh wow. Like I, that wasn't that bad. Like, I, I think I could do more of these. So, um, entered a number of different swims. Of course, I was sort of stuck in the Caribbean for a while because for whatever reason, we had some trips down there. And so I did one in St. The one in St. Croix, the Coral Beach swim, the five mile. Um, and then also around the sound in Bermuda and just as having such a great time. I was like, this is amazing. Like this makes me want to swim again. Um, and, uh, and really get into it. And then, of course, I realized, oh, wait, there's a whole bunch of stuff stateside. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so that was what I got. Kind of, oh, there's a, there's a huge world of this going on. So this is all back about 2015. Um, you know, I've talked to several other people, like Mark Spratt and a couple others, and he's like, you know, there, there are these sort of waves of, of groups and people who've been in it for a while can kind of see these sort of new waves of, of groups coming in, um, kind of younger swimmers or just a different collection of people who enter the sport um that kind of in, in a group and he's like yeah there's a bunch of people who came in around 2015 um you know who, who entered for whatever reason you know kind of discovered a lot of what was going on um so yeah it's been um it's been great and uh you know continue to be really excited about you know the racing and the uh just the the even the cool independence homes that people do you know so just love i mean i have trackers up all the time <laughs> when when people are going uh so if I'm, yeah. if I'm working and somebody's watching it yeah that's um, yeah yeah really i like i like i like that part as well it's kind of fun like watching some of sarah thomas's yeah. epic swims like it'd be up in the middle of the night and like looking at like, you seeing where she's at or whatever but, yeah it was, it was great i was in my office at that point i'm not there anymore um not just because of Corona, but I quit my job, uh, as you know. But uh, I was getting people in my office excited about it. You know, they'd come in the next day and they'd be like, well, who are you watching now? I'm like, I'm watching the same person. <laughs> like, like, what do you mean? And I'm like, it's still her. She's still swimming. And I'm like, that's not possible. It's like, yeah, it is. Actually, it is. So there was, um, yeah, Sarah's, um, uh, the, the chest, I want to say chest beat, that's all right. The Champlain swim. Yeah. Um, what really got people aware, or at least in my office, of like cheering for the swimmers on my screen. <laughs> yeah. But it was, they were like, holy shit, that's amazing. Yeah, it is. Yeah. So. It's interesting to me that so the competition, like when you got third in the, the rate, the event that you thought you might drown in, right. you're like, but that's kind of what you got you back, like kind of hooked you. So do you it think? it brings out like this competitive like side of you or like it fulfills this competitive need in you. But, yeah. Like. <laughs> There's, um, I have I, uh, my college roommate, um, really kind of my best friend. Um, he's just an amazing guy. Uh, he became a pretty, um, pretty intense, uh, amateur triathlete. So he and I like, you know, we were sort of fitness people in, in college when we were roommates, but also then like over the years, like we did marathons together, we did triathlons together. But he's at like this next level or was, he's got a, L4 spinal injury now, unfortunately, it's, it's kind of out of commission indefinitely. But um, he was my kayaker for the uh, Key West swim. So I did the Key West, the 20K, a swim around Key West, um, which is kind of a miserable swim 
because it's so hot. Um, and I'm, yeah. you know, I, as much as I love cold water, I, I like warm water. I've done this in the Caribbean, but that's extreme. It's night, I mean, the water was 90 to 92 degrees. Um, oh so you're kind of choking the whole time. <laughs> that sounds <laughs> um, But uh, he, he had wanted to participate in this. I was like, you could be my kayaker. And he did amazing, he was a sailor, so he was cutting these amazingly straight lines. And at some point there was somebody ahead of us and he's like, you realize that, that you're in third place right now and that's the second place guy and he's 500 yards out. And he's like, and we're gaining on him. And I'm thinking like, I'm so exhausted. I'm already 10K in. Why are you telling me this? He's like, because I know who you are. <laughs> I'm like, damn it. So like, we spent <laughs> the rest of the time chasing this guy down and I did finally pass him and we wow. came in second. Nice. Uh, but, but one thing I said yesterday, and this is really important on this part of the topic, um, is yeah, I, I, I placed well at a lot of races, um, usually in the top five, ten percent. Um, I've won a few finally now, which is fun. But I always, I always say, like, it's just who shows up. There's tons of people who can beat the living crap out of me. I'm not a FINA level swimmer. I just, you know, good, but I'm not, like, at that, like, that competitive level. But what I love the most during races like that is when I'm alone. Um, and I, I, I really don't love swimming a close race when people are around me. It sort of, it takes me, it puts all this stress and anxiety and this, like, need to perform and all that competitiveness bubbles to the surface in some ways it spoils the thing i love most about this sport which is the love we have for each other and the community and the fact that we're just doing this thing that we physically love to do okay. um and it's like ah, I, I don't want to be fighting <laughs> either with myself brain or, or or that other person i want to swim my own thing um so i love being either way out in front or somewhere where i know everybody out in front is so much faster than me that there's no way i should or even try to catch them <laughs> Yeah, uh, Portland this. Yeah, Go Portland ahead. this year was tough because it was such. There's a lot of amazing people there, and um, I had somebody like creeping up my tail like the last hour, and it made that last hour really un unpleasant. <laughs> I mean, I did, I did still win, but like not win, but like I, I stick, came in ahead of them, but they closed that gap to like thirty seconds, um, <laughs> even less, fifteen seconds over the course of the last hour, and it was terrifying to me. It was like, yeah. <laughs> I should have just stopped and let them pass and so I could enjoy this swim. Like, cause it's meaningless. It's like, I don't care. It's not like there's prize money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. I just swim without being chased. So anyway. Have, have you done any solo, any, like any solo crossings or anything? I know not, not so much cr crossings, but a couple of years ago I went down to, I was really inspired by uh, some of the solo work that some other people were doing. And I really wanted to get in, a 10 mile ocean swim. I had never done anything that long. I'd done 10 Ks and all that, but I was sort of like, hit 10 miles. Um, and again, so we were down in St. Lucia, um, and this was before the Molly Nance had done her crossing. The southern shore of St. Lucia has these two, it's a national world heritage site, it's two really tall mountains called Pitons. Um, and so I decided I would make up a swim that would go from this resort up there down to the Pitons and back. And it, you know, according to Evan and MSF, nobody had ever done anything like that. So I just sort of set a course and I'm like, this isn't really, like I, I actually did use MSF logging and rules to try to like record it. But honestly, it was, <laughs> thankfully, I actually had gotten escorts um, and or a, a boat to go with me because actually it was a very hostile environment um, with the native population. They uh, they were not, not so much the, um, I don't want to put this, not the, not the people who I was working with, but like we went past several harbors and there were some fishermen who were like, oh, let's mess with these guys. And they were literally like running their boats up close to us and yelling at us. and like, what are you doing swimming out here? This is stupid. And like, it was, it wasn't well researched, frankly. And I did not find that island to be very friendly, honestly. Um, so thankfully I had taken Cindy's advice actually and got on an actual powerboat because we were thinking of just doing it in a kayak and just be like, well, let's just go out. I think I can't imagine if we had not had a powerboat with us who was who would yell back and who would put themselves between us and the other people who were coming up and trying to harass us. It was that's stressful. Yeah. So that but it was ultimately it was a successful swim. I did the 10 miles um and it was fun and beautiful, but it was also like eh. <laughs> there's a lesson learned there. Uh, yeah. Um, tell us about your uh, favorite place to swim on a regular basis. So, yeah, um, kind of have a, a number of them, like everybody. Um, you know, I, I've loved 
all the different like locations that I've traveled to to swim for for races and events. Um, obviously, you know San Francisco, um, the whole aquatic park. Um, I've fallen in love with the rivers in Tennessee um, through the Knoxville race and um, swim in the suck. Um, I do love swimming in the Caribbean. It's, it's amazing. Um, but I've really, of course, because of, I have swimming locations local, there's something very special about the stuff that you swim in around your your own world in your own world. So that would be Walden Pond, obviously, where I am a lot. Um, people who know me see a lot of posts from there. Um, it's about a half mile long and maybe a quarter mile wide, if even that. So it's it's a very small place, but it's very special. And there's all sorts of little inlets and the water's super clear and it's just, it's nice. Um, and there's quite a lot of swimmers who show up all the time, year round, including when it's frozen, <laughs> breaking through the ice. Uh, then um, certainly Elf Street here in Boston, um, the, the wonderful, and that's actually one of the things that got me pulled back into swimming was um, the great community of swimmers, open water swimmers here that just swim off the coast of Boston. Um, so in Southie, the neighborhood in Boston, there's this wonderful community center there, um, which unfortunately is closed now, but and also they're going to go through a big renovation over the next year or two. So we're all a little concerned about that because we're going to lose our, our bathhouse if you like start closing down essentially. Um, so that would be tough for us. Um, but uh, that's a, an amazing place to swim, just to you know, ride your bike out of a major city for 10 minutes and then you're swimming in you know, this clean, beautiful water um, and lots of different courses and no boats. And it's just nice. Wow. Um, and then there again, it's a bay in Rhode Island where I grew up. Um, and all three of these are, and a lot of these places are places, I've mentioned this on the call, where are, were so polluted when I was a kid that you wouldn't have thought about swimming in them at all. I mean, Boston Harbor especially was... I mean, you would get hospitalized if you fell in. Yeah. Um, and uh, in the 90s, they put in a new septic treatment plant called Deer Island and um, really cleaned it up. And because we have a 10 or 11 foot tide every day, um, we have a lot of flushing <laughs> that goes on. So I um, wouldn't say it was rapid, but you know, over the course of the last few decades, it's really, it's cleaned up. Um, mm. Why, you know, every time I see that sort of backtrack on environmental regulations, I freaked out and mm -hmm. angry. Because it's yeah. like, you, we cannot take this for granted. It's so much work to do um, and to, to win back. Um, and Narragansett Bay was sort of the same way. Um, it's like you, as kids, we were like, oh, it smells funny. Because it did. And it was full of jellyfish, you know, feeding off of all the pollutants and nutrients. And um, it's not like that anymore. It's beautiful. So. Um, cool. Uh, what about your favorite event that you've participated in? I, um, I have a special place in my heart for the <laughs> um, event that Darren Miller's come up with in Pittsburgh called the 3RMS, the Three Rivers Marathon Swim. Um, and if anybody has been tracking it, it's, you know, he started a number of years ago kind of as a test swim. He was using it, that course and that, those rivers to train for his own um, Ocean 7 stuff, um, which again, always, it's, it, when I first heard about him and heard about it, I had gone to school in Pittsburgh. I was born in Pittsburgh. So there's something about Pittsburgh in my life that's very important. Um, and then I lived there for a number of years. I didn't move to New England until 2007. So I was there for 15 years um, of my adult life. Hi. Uh, Hi. You're up early. <laughs> so, so when I heard that there was a swim in Pittsburgh, it was like you could swim in the rivers. Again, so polluted. Why like, who would be doing that? Yeah. Um, but going back, I was like, oh, wow, you know, if it really hasn't rained a lot, um, in a few days, it's actually quite nice. So um, I did the swim in 2017. It was canceled in 2018 uh, because of uh, rain and, and did the too much runoff and it's flooding. Yeah. And did it last year. Um, Mark Stratt had done it last year with me too. Um, he was there, so I got a big thumbs up on the call yesterday talking about it. Um, but it's so interesting because it's it's three rivers. You go out and back five kilometers in each one. Um, and so there is some strategy to it because you have currents, like you're, you're swimming into and out, like with and without, like, sorry, out and against current three times. Wow. Um, and fortunately, the last of the, these six legs <laughs> does carry you home. But it's nice to do, I mean, 30K is a substantial amount of swimming. It, take, I mean, it takes me eight hours to do it. Um, in fact, the first year I did it in eight, it was 802, and last year it was 801. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I want to break eight out. <laughs> yeah. uh, Sarah's got a better time than I do on that. I'm like, oh, I gotta get better than Sarah's time. Because <laughs> uh, she did it, I think, one of the first years uh, when Darren was 
right? You know, it's just a special, it's just a special town, a special place for me. And I love just that format. Um, and, it, you know, breaking that up into six segments actually helps you kind of mentally deal with it. It's like, oh, it's two hour swims. <laughs> right. Oh, that sounds really cool. Um, I've also really loved Swim the Suck. I have to give Kara so much credit for that, um, that race and, and also all the people that help with it. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing, it, it goes off so smoothly and every year I feel like it's improved. Um, I've done it a number of times, I've proved it a number of times. Um, and it's just, it's, it's a really beautiful place. I never thought I would fall in love with a river in Tennessee, you know, yeah, <laughs> but it's, yeah, no. it, it's fun. And, and it's just uh, so much of, so many people show up that I know. And so it's like a little reunion every year. So I kind of am committed to going there every year, if not to swim it, just to, to crew it, just to be there. Um, cause it, it does always feel like it's, and it's always almost like the last race of the year as well. So yeah. it's kind of a, a nice cap to the end. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah those, are my, those are my big two, I think right now that I, I just, I adore and would, would, and would keep going back and just doing them over and over. That's awesome. Yeah. So. I haven't done the river run in Pittsburgh. I'd love to do that someday. We'll see. <laughs> the tennis it's, it, surprise it's, me. Pittsburgh's really um, it's a gem of a city like it's it's so pretty and people think about pittsburgh and they hear the name pittsburgh and it just sounds bad and they have they know the legacy of like the pollution and then the industrial world and, you know it's like detroit and even detroit has some beautiful beauty to it but like pittsburgh cleaned up many many years ago and it's it's really a spectacular swim because there's I get it, the coastline and the, the whole experience is changing constantly every every minute is different um, you know, in some ways, like Portland Bridge. Um, although, actually, that last part of Portland Bridge is very. <laughs> never <laughs> it's ends. just it never ends. Um, but yeah, tons of bridges, tons of like interesting coasts, and water changes three times. You know, because each river is a little different, so yeah. it's fun. fun. I've got to get that one on the docket. Um, <laughs> about uh, are you a process or an outcome person? Uh, so I. Um, I, I actually I talked a little bit about this already, but I'll, I'll mention it again. I, mean, I think the one of the things I said yesterday that I kind of came up with in my notes was, in some ways, I feel like I became the swimmer I hated um, when I was in in, uh, in age group swimming. Where I don't I, I swim a lot. I train I train hard, but I don't have a coach. I don't have anybody I'm training with. I swim alone most of the time. You know, I like to go out in groups, but I don't I don't really train on a program or with anybody. Um, and I don't train as hard, well, not hard. I don't train as much distance as most people. Um, and yet the outcome for me is often very good. I'm often, you know, again, like in, in the sort of the top of the field. So, you know, and I always used to rage at people like that, you know, cause they would always be beating me. I was putting in so much time and effort in my age group swimming and just, I never went to nationals, never went to junior Olympics, never went, I never went to anything. Um, and yet I was always like, I felt like I was always really fast in practice. I swam with Jenny Thomas one day, like she came to our pool and like made me go for, like she made me lead the lane. I'm like, <laughs> like, what are we doing here? <laughs> like, and I did like, like I led a 2000 thing with like Jenny Thomas on my toes. I'm like, why am I not going to nationals? <laughs> but it just, it never translated into anything like that for me. Yeah. Um, so to find open water swimming and like, and even to find these races and also find that, oh, actually, I, I can do this really well on, on the training I have time for um, and, and, and place really well. It, it's, it's fun. I, was, I, I got an All-American at some point a couple of years ago, and I was like near tears. It was so important to me like, that I finally got an All-American status at the age of 43 or whatever Because, you know, I was just so jealous, like my whole career of these you know, people who I, again, I was leading the lane. I was doing all, it felt like I was doing so much more work than them. And then they would go to these meets and kick ass. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, I, um, so I, I think I love the journey. And like I said, I don't love racing when there's other people around me, but the performance is important. Um, but I also look at it very much like I, I, I was given a gift. I was, I have the ability to do this um, in the time that I've had and the, the opportunity to come back to it um i don't want to squander that um and also i just i you know understand what it is for me but also that i didn't i don't deserve it i didn't earn it you know it's it's nothing language around that like that it's like i have the opportunity to do it i love to celebrate i want to share it with other people um and i want to encourage other people to do it um you know 
it's, it's never, I actually love swimming with people who are much slower than me. Um, you know, in groups, like, you know, just you know, kind of being, still being with them, like circling around or, you know, there's ways to, that I can and it's, and we all can swim together in, in pods and it's, it's fun. Um, so, so yeah, I, I don't know if that really answers the question in some little bit, but it's, I, I, I love the process. I love training, but, um, the, the outcome is important, but I also recognize the outcome for what it is. Um, some days that it's just, um, it's who showed up and who brought the talent <laughs> that, they're, that they maybe may have been born with. Right. Uh, yeah. So. How about, um, um, hard situations? How do you handle tough mm, situations? This one's good. Um, well, two things. One, one of the ones I brought up yesterday was that I think was so important to talk about is not just hard situations personally, but where the whole race just goes to pieces. Um, and I, I was, I was fortunate enough very early on, Janine was there actually too, to be part of the 2015, um, Lake George swim. And I'm not sure if you've ever heard about what happened there, but it was really the first time they pulled together a group of people who were going to do the whole lake and I think it's 36 mile, very long swim. Um, and you could go either North or South. We started, you know, the long story short, we made the choice to go South, um, or North to South. Uh, and the race started and it was the winds are kind of kicking up and we knew it was going to be a little breezy in the evening and then it just poof, like 20 30 knot winds huge waves I mean, this is a finger lake and like it it churned up like the worst ocean you've ever seen people's pontoon boats were like sinking um we lost our kayaker like who didn't even know how to swim like he thought he was going to die yeah. uh, i mean there was just and every i think people are on the radio screaming like it's it's chaos like and there were i can't remember how many there were some relays and some other boats um or and some solo swimmers but the whole thing just like came apart at the scenes um and there was a contingency plan for it and everybody you know, figured out how to get together and the safety protocols all went into place and everybody got back to shore safely um and it was so it was so good to see that early on like this is four years ago you know and it, right when i'm getting into the sport it's like wow like and, you know, here I'm watching, I was, Chris George was the one I was crewing for. I'm watching him pour out all of his feeds into the lake. Like, well, I guess we're not doing this. And I had been tracking his training for a year. And, like, just to, just to experience all of that loss. <laughs> but then to watch everybody come together. And then even some people stayed and, and you know, did it the next week. Or you know, everybody had a different way of dealing with it, um, which was also good to see. Because uh, that's, you know, the ultimate, like, well, guess we're not doing this thing that we all had this major plan to do, and it just wasn't safe. Um, personally, um, my tough situations I've discovered, I, I first discovered them in the Men from Magog, actually, when I was doing the Kingdom Swim. And I was so concerned about getting my feeds right and getting all this other stuff right and being physically ready that I had not focused on what it was going to be like to be in the dark. Not, not the outside dark, but just like, you know, the, that dark space when you're swimming for you're at hour four and you're starting to get tired and maybe you've screwed up a feed or something and you're just, you're just not in that right place. I'm like, why am I doing this? <laughs> um, and that, that really hit me hard in that race. And it's like, I need to not, I need to figure this out. Like, cause this isn't, this, that wasn't fun. Like I, I really didn't enjoy the, the end of that swim. Um, and so started to do some more training and, and sort of exercise. And then I realized what was really helping was to just focus when I, those moments come, and even before they come, just to focus on the joy of doing what you're doing um, and like really like feeling every muscle move, feeling even imagining like the endorphins hitting your brain and just just the ecstasy of, and the privilege and the honor of being able to be out there and just swimming um, and doing something you love at our age. You know, it's like you know, mentioned that, you know, there's so many people out there who are like, you shouldn't be doing all this stuff at your age. It's like, you're too old for this. It's like, you're too young to not be doing something you love. Like, yeah, <laughs> you know, it's so no, you know, I mean, no, got people in their seventies pushing eighties doing this. Like, absolutely. It's amazing. Um, but yeah, during those times of, of trouble or, you know, difficulty, um, you know, sometimes it's even just stopping, like just stop, like hold up, I'm going to just stop here, take everything in, just reset. Um, and it's fine. Again, it's nice when you're not in a race or even if you are in a race or either somewhere where there's not many people around, you can afford that kind of break. It's another reason I don't really love pool swimming anymore or racing. I did do a, a meet last year and it was fun to visit that world again, but 
you know, you screw up your start or you miss a flip turn or your goggles fill up and <laughs> there you go. It's over. Exactly. It's over. I know. Exactly. <laughs> Whereas with, with, with open water, you know, and you've got something that's going to take you six hours. Like if you take 15 seconds and reset your goggles, what do you care? You know, it's, it's not, <laughs> it's fine. It's uh, right. Yeah. So I, I, I love that aspect. Um, but yeah, the, the, the meditation on joy and, 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 and privilege and honor of, of being able to do the work is and, and, and be in the in the moment is, is how I push through that. It's really worked well <laughs> um, to, yeah. to move through those. So good. Very cool. Um, what's the worst part for you about being um, in isolation, social isolation? Are you guys forced to oh. in Boston? Um, well, so it's such a weird thing for me personally because I, I was already, I had, you know, started this sabbatical, like I quit my job and I'm, like, I'm going to be spending a lot of time alone, and not working and kind of disconnected from the, the groups of people that I, you know, I was with, um, which was, it was very difficult at first. And then I realized like, oh, here comes everybody else, you know, <laughs> <laughs> they, they didn't have a choice in some ways to, you know, work from home or, or you know, worse, lose their jobs. Um, so it's, it's been an interesting time with the that that part um i'm an extremely huggy person i like to hug people and that part is awful like you know i have we do still have some access to waterways and waterfronts so there are some of us that still get together in groups of two or three and again it's just to be like oh why can't i hug you <laughs> um you know it's 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 hard um but the, honestly so far there's been something nice about the the sort of clean slate that, um, you know, all the races being wiped out is done. Um, it's going to be even more interesting if we can still have access and the waters are warm enough to swim longer. Uh, cause right now, you know, my swims are 45, 50 minutes at max. Cause otherwise I you know, just, I freeze out cause we're still below 50 up here. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm talking to a lot of people who are saying, yeah, I'm sort of just swimming to swim and it's nice. Um, you know, it, it, I, I miss all the people I miss all the racing, but, it's also helping me understand why I'm, why I'm doing this and just giving me a, a sort of just a, a nice baseline of, you know, this is enough. Um, so I think in, in some ways we're all going to come away with some, something from this, hopefully, hopefully good. Um, you know, as painful and unfortunate as so much of it is, it's also giving us a chance to reflect and kind of reset ourselves, our bodies and our minds on the, yeah. on the whole, all the frenzy <laughs> and really, understand what's important so yeah yeah um i think you talked a little bit about this about like what keeps you going you know like in a hard swim but mm -hmm. do you have any other insights into like kind of how to keep yourself going through hard situations or yeah i mean you know it's funny it's, i was it was so glad cindy was on the call yesterday too because i called up two things that she had said to me recently um, one of which was earlier this year when i first quit she's like you know I'm going to make an observation. You have always posted about your swims and your swimming um, as like a stress relief. Like, you know, you post from the pool at 9, 10 or 10, 30 at night. Like, I just swam and I, God, what a terrible day I had. And this was just, you know, great to burn off all this, this energy and, and rage and anger and all that. <laughs> um, and I'd also been very open and honest with a lot of people about swimming to overcome smoking. Um, and she said, I wonder what, you know, as you quit your job, what you will swim for. Um, and I was like, oh, wow, <laughs> that's really, uh, that's really powerful. Uh, and because I didn't think it would be any different. And it was, it has been. Um, I mean, I've originally, originally I was training for SCAR earlier this year, but finding myself kind of in that same, like, okay, you know, got to get up to a certain number of yards and got to do this. And like, you know, there's things that, you know, oh God, if I don't get up to 40K weeks by March 1st, you know, it's going to be a horrible set of weeks and, and just, to have all that kind of fade away was really <laughs> nice. It's like, I do want to do SCAR. I do want to trade all that. But um, yeah, it's, um, it, I think, finding new reasons. Um, you know, I, I, the, my biggest reason will always be, I think, is, is this community. And one of the things I said yesterday too, it's, you know, I think the more of us, I don't think it's, none of us can argue that we are a family, but Yes, we are also in some ways a highly functional and highly dysfunctional family. <laughs> yes. Different white groups that are there. And that in some ways, it's what makes it very real. Uh, like, sure, there's people who don't get along. Sure, there's people who are super chummy over here and little clicks and 
and the whole thing, just like any family would be. Um, but ultimately, you know, seeing people come together um, and, and drop some of that stuff during races and also coming together with people like Mindy, you know, who's battling with cancer and just, I, I just, I, I see, I just see so much camaraderie and, and, and just the way people have treated me and the diversity of the group, whether you're, um, maybe we don't have that much racial and ethnic diversity, but certainly um, some economic, but also some just sort of the body types and the speeds and the gender and, um, you know, gay, lesbian, straight. It's, it's, there's all sorts of diversity and just, I've just never felt so included um, and, and being able to also include other people um, in, in, a, in a group. Um, you know, even as spread out as we are, which is why I love these calls because they kind of bring everybody together, yeah. <laughs> or at least different groups of people want to just want to yeah. hang out uh, for a couple couple minutes twice a week. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's fantastic. I mean, I, I, um, yeah, I feel that sense of community too, and I don't get like I don't see the like I've been so kind of in and out of it with having two kids in the last five years so it's been so like I've been able to like pop in like do an event but I don't see like the clicking and thing like I mean I know like I like I remember seeing you at Swim the Suck like last year was it and and I knew you knew other like because we see each other on social media so it's kind of, kind of interesting right. it's like you know people know other people but you don't really know them and I'm not forward enough yeah. to be like, oh hey I saw you on social media but anyway I guess my point is like um like going to the 24 hour relay and like just being able to make like these connections. Like, like to me, that, that was just an awesome way yeah. to get people are just, you know, cause the people are in and out of the water at all different times and you, and you just have this focused time with people. It's different from going to an event where we all are on the edge and we all say, okay, have a great swim. And we swim, you know, and then we're all just swimming. Yeah. <laughs> so, the 20, I, so I did both the 24 hour relay. And then a couple of weekends later, the, the men from Magog winter swimming festival, you know, the oh. ice swimming and I mean, what a great way to end yeah. the year yeah. in February. But like, it was just, you know, was some, a lot of us who were at, at both of them, I know Liz, Liz Allman was there at both and two others. And it's just like, it was such a great time. Like, it's like how I, I'd like to remember, it's what I want to see us come back to, but it's also yeah. a great set of memories to hold as we go through this um, yeah. to be like, now that's like, that's truly what it should be like. Like, yeah, yeah fun, talking, chattering enjoying each other, hearing what, what our goals are for the year. Um, yeah, just, you know, even, even though they, a lot of them got swept away. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's fine. Like it's, again, it's like, the, this is like the big Lake George, you know, it's, it's all, it's, that's it's going to fall apart, but you know, it's going to come back together. It will. That's right. It's what we do. Yeah. So who do you recommend I have on a future? Mm. I'm excited about Mark tomorrow. Okay. Uh, who else? Um, I don't. Um, I don't know. If she does. She might be interested, but um, I'm trying to think of like local Boston people. But um, there's uh, Elaine Howley mm -hmm. um, here, who I may know of, um, but she's you know been really central in the Boston. Like, I think she's actually kind of the key organizer of Boston Light now, um, and also just his you know incredible resume of swims. Um, it's obviously on Sarah's crew um, for her swim um but actually both of her swim her big swims and uh she's just she's a she's got some some really great stories um okay. and you know just while thinking about local people it's also martha wood um who uh is up here in boston and just i think has a some ways a similar story to me um you know really uh interesting journey with cold water acclimation too like as somebody who really fought to you know try to get into colder and colder temperatures um so she could um, she could do more. So um, I can introduce you to the two of them. I mean, if, or I know, if you're not, but yeah, if you could introduce yeah. me to that. Yeah. And if I think of others, I'll let you know. Um, but yeah, those are those are sort of two that uh, that I think would be uh, be would be great additions, and they might really love the call too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what about? Okay, I'm I'm floating different names. What other yeah. names should we have? The virtual swim practices, and it's not really where we're at anymore. It's more like kind of like coffee talk or uh -oh. <laughs> interview the swimmer. Do you only do marathon swimmers? I don't know. What, what do you think? <laughs> I mean, um, that's where my heart is, but, but I wouldn't have any hesitation talking to anybody who wanted to, I don't know, I guess like open water is pretty I guess maybe a core theme, but, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. How exclusive do we get? <laughs> right. 
yeah because it is it's really a story like it's 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 stories um yeah and storytelling um there's a, 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 a you think on it you don't have to tell yeah, me right think about it there's there's a group here that does there's actually a storytelling competition in, in boston um mm-hmm. It's called Mass Mouth, <laughs> a little <laughs> weird, uh, but that's, I try to think like swim, swimmer's mouths or like mouthing off or like, I don't know, it's just, that's not. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, I think we're just going to have to keep thinking about it, but uh, if there's something, <laughs> you know, for sure. Uh, awesome. Thank you for letting me chat with you this morning, Chris. It's been awesome. awesome. It has. Your internet's been perfect the whole time. So maybe I was <laughs> okay. it gives me hope for yeah. tomorrow with Mark. <laughs> exactly. Um, awesome. All right. Um, also, did you update your Zoom um, account? Because this one, I think this is over forty minutes, isn't it? It is, but I think if it's only one person, if they don't, oh, they don't restrict okay. you. Someone yeah. else put me off to that. Yeah. Okay. No, I haven't. I still haven't updated it yet. I kind of have this feeling like we shouldn't. Like, I, I, at the same time, I don't want to cut people off. I don't know that I want it to end up being like an hour. Like, I don't. You know, like there's something nice okay. about it being like that. Yeah, it 